Hi everybody, welcome to Goshen Prepping. I talk about this little baby all the time, the GQ radiation detector, Geiger counter as you wanna call it, that I have and I talk about all the time. This is an amazing piece of equipment, but I've had a lot of people say, you know, I have this, I bought it and it's really cool, but I don't really know how to use it. So I'm gonna go through just a very brief video, mind you, and try to explain a couple of things to help you understand a little bit more about radiation. Because of course, when you look at it like a nuclear emergency or some kind of nuclear attack, et cetera, it's a very real possibility. And this literally, out of almost any of your preps, could easily save your life to make sure that you are protected from any type of radiation that might be heading toward you, like fallout or contaminated water, et cetera. Alpha particles are the least dangerous. It's just a helium atom. Granted, if you ingest a lot of them, it can cause problems, and that's like heavy water. Beta radiation are electrons. Gamma radiation is what's called a photon, or a very high energized packet of energy. And this is what detects the beta and the gammas, by far the most dangerous of the two. And it puts it into a very easy format. Now, there's lots of things this thing will do. Just kind of give you a little spoiler. You can connect to your computer and look at some graphs, et cetera, to see how things go. But it is really good, in fact, I'll go ahead and turn it on. It's really good for having a situation in which it picks up just radiation. And instead of trying to put it into like a log and trying to figure out over a long period of time how much dosage have I had, it's really good telling you of how many uh, beats you're getting as far as the radiation hitting it just sitting here. And this is just background radiation. Radiation hits us all the time. And radiation is just a probability thing, by the way. Think about this. You know, there, there's that little click. That was a gamma ray flying through and hit this device and letting you know that, oh, by the way, a piece of radiation, a little packet of radiation just hit this. Didn't it go through me too? Sure. And can't it cause cancer? Sure it can. But the odds of just one or two or three or four little gamma rays coming through causing some type of cancer are pretty slim. The more radiation that hits you, the higher the probability of causing problems or, as we simply put it, damage to your tissue. So we look at time, distance, and shielding. The shielding we're not gonna talk about today. Obviously you wanna have a shield so it blocks a lot of the radiation, but how much time do you have from this? Well, obviously we're not having a lot of radiation coming through. So over a long period of time, we've had this background radiation in our entire lives and it's not messing with you. But if you have a lot of it coming through for a short amount of time, that's where a problem comes in. But we also look at distance. And we'll talk about that with this meter too to help you understand a little bit more distance because that is, by the way, your biggest thing as a prepper. You wanna make sure you have as much distance as possible. People think about shielding. Stay away from that thinking and shielding. You know, you need to be in the center of your basement, center of your house, away from the fallout, away from the radiation. And I'm sorry, you don't have a foot of lead in your house. You developing some kind of shielding to stop the radiation, kind of good luck with that. All right, anyway, real quick, this comes with when you buy this, it comes with the device itself. It comes with a USB cord, which I put here somewhere. But it also comes up with this nice little card. This is great, by the way. The Nuclear Radiation Safety Guide. And the safety guide tells you what to look for when it comes to the amount of counts per minute, when it looks to the amount of micro sieverts, is what we're called, per hour. And the sieverts are simply just a unit of radiation. You can see that right here, by the way. We're talking about micro sieverts, so not very much at all. Those sieverts are simply just a unit of radiation that basically can cause ionization or damage your tissue. There's so much math to this, and there's so many different terms. We can even talk about the term ranking. A ranking is simply just a different unit of sieverts. Don't worry about either one of those, because I think that's why people get confused with radiation, is they think they need to know all this terminology. You simply don't. You need to know how much hits you in a certain amount of time. And that's where this card comes in handy, which again comes with this Geiger counter. All right, so right now, even as you hear it clicking, we've only received 0.13 micro sieverts per hour, 0.13. And if you look at the card on here, it says if you have anywhere from 0 0.03 to 0 0.033, everything's fine. It's called background radiation. So if you have this and some fallout happens outside and you're putting this by the window and you're stepping back and it's going, making all kinds of light noises, obviously you're gonna get up into the danger zones. This tells you exactly what kind of rate of sieverts are coming in. You know, that's amount of sieverts per hour, micro sieverts, is what's problematic. Does that make sense? So I actually have some radioactive material right here, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. And now look, right here, do you hear a difference in the ticking between the background radiation and having this? But wait a second, I'm holding some radioactive material in my hand. I'm not kidding you, this is really radioactive material inside this little baggie right here. 
But why isn't it setting the Geiger counter off more? Because of distance. Because when you look at distance, think about this. Let's say you want to read a book in your bedroom and you have a light on. You know just instinctively if you get really close to that light, it's going to make your book nice and bright. But what happens if the light's here and you go to the other side of the room? How much light's actually hitting your book? Barely any. Because it's exponentially getting dimmer the further you get away from the source. Same thing with radiation. So right here, this thing's not giving off a lot of radiation, by the way. You know, it's, just, it's, it's completely allowable by law to have this small amount of nuclear radiation in your house. Even though it's weird even saying that. But it is putting it out. It's just what happens is it's putting out such dim amount. It's like a very dim light bulb. It's barely doing anything lighting up this Geiger counter. But if I take it and put it right next to it, now it's picking up much more. And what's neat about this Geiger counter, you can turn off these clicks, by the way, if it drives you nuts. But not only will it have the clicks on there, but once you get to a point on here where you start hitting the danger zone, then, wait for it, well, it's going to happen in a second. There's an alarm on here. So you could have this thing going and basically the alarm will start going off, letting you know that your dosage is starting to get too high and you need to start taking action. There it is. Even if I take away that radioactive source, the alarm's still going off because guess what? You've now are studying. It's still not to a point where dosage wise, at least with this little piece of radiation, radioactive material here, it's going to cause any major problems. But you need to be proactive about this. Right now we're at 0.84 micro sieverts per hour. So when I pull the card up, 0.84, oh yeah, we're actually, this is called now a high level of radiation. You need to closely watch this and find out what's going on. I know what's going on. My piece of radioactive material is setting the alarm off on here. So, I mean, is this dangerous? Sure. If I continuously handle this or hold it to my brain for a long period of time, yes, I am actually getting some radiation to my brain by doing this, but the amount is so small that statistically it's not going to cause any type of cancer since it is such a small amount of radiation. That's the whole thing about being a nuclear specialist. You can see how some of this stuff works without getting completely alarmed and say, oh no, it's radioactive. Radiation itself isn't a problem unless you actually have over a long period of time, high dosages, et cetera. Okay, so what else can we look at? When we talk about dosages, we have to be able to understand some simple numbers about this and we can, this is just for your own edification, by the way. Even if you simply just have this, this will tell you if you're having any major problems as far as the radiation around your house. So let's go ahead and look at this little chart I made to kind of give you an idea. That's all just an idea as far as any problems go. If you have four to five sieverts over a very short period of time, four to five, what I just showed you is in the micro sievert. So we're talking about way, way, way smaller amount. It could cause death in 50% of an exposed population within 30 days. We're talking about a long period of time. And that's why I'm telling you, even putting the, the radioactive material next to my head, it's, it's so, so small. It's not really a real possibility of causing problems. You have to have four to five sieverts. We only had a few micro sieverts. If you get to 50 millisieverts, that's the lowest dose we've ever even seen that causes cancer. This was producing 1,000 times less than that. 1,000 times less. So 50 to cause cancer. 1,000 millisieverts, or simply just one sievert, in a short-term dose, in other words, putting out very quickly at you all at once, like a nuclear burst, boom, just gave you one sievert, this will be enough to cause radiation sickness. 2,000 to 10,000 millisieverts, or simply two to 10 sieverts, will most likely be fatal, and you'll probably die within a few weeks. And here's a very quick thing we use in the military as a general reference. The faster you vomit after your exposure, the higher the chances are you're going to die from that exposure. For example, the number we look at is usually about an hour or so. So if you got exposed, let's say there's nuclear detonation nearby and you're starting to vomit within an hour, I hate to say it, you're probably gonna die. We're even talking about within maybe an hour and a half, two hours, there's an excellent chance you're gonna die because the amount of radiation you receive so quickly that's causing the vomiting, it's been too high of a dose for you. But now what we see often in cases where people still die because it's like cancer or, or problems a little bit later on, they'll actually have some symptoms right away. They'll actually feel vomiting. And what happens, by the way, with the vomiting is the radiation, those gamma rays, is what's called ionizing radiation, which means it makes ions, which are charged particles, and your entire nervous system runs on charged particles. It's like electricity, pretty neat. And so what happens is that those charged particles interact with your nervous system and give you that sensation of, I really need to throw up and you'll, you'll go vomit somewhere. 
that means you've actually received a very high dose. Now, if you receive that dose, even if it's been an hour or two or even 10 or 15, 20 hours later, you vomited, after a little bit, you're like, okay, now I'm starting to feel better now. That's very common, by the way, and the worst is yet to come. The vomiting is the easy part. That's just a quick dose of ionization on your nervous system. Then you'll feel better for a little bit. Then the symptoms start kicking in, and those symptoms include more nausea and vomiting, headaches, dizziness, hair loss, fatigue, and malaise. Malaise is just that general feeling, by the way, of like, oh, I feel sick. What's wrong with you? I don't know. I just feel, oh, I just feel awful today. That's malaise. And you'll get that feeling. And of course, with the hair loss and everything else, your death will come. Um, and again, some cases very quickly, if we're talking about vomiting within the first hour after being exposed, it's going to come pretty quickly. And that is an awful, awful way to die. Okay. So with that, this Geiger counter is very helpful. I can go for through far more than this, even show you basically how to log out on the computer and stuff. But I find that when I start getting into the physics of these radon radiation detectors and Geiger counters and try to get through the math, if, if it's anything, it's not going to help people, but often even confuse them even more. It, they make it so simple buying this. And of course, I'll link this below if you haven't got yours yet. But it's so simple. Just turn it on. Hold the button for three seconds. Okay. And now it's going to start picking up some radiation. Now there's been a nuclear detonation nearby. And let's say there's fallout. You haven't vomited or anything like that, but you're like, oh, is this dangerous out there? Right here, let's say I'm you know, 50 feet from my windows and walls. Yeah, you know, because windows and walls won't stop the radiation, by the way. Don't get a false, false security thinking this is going to stop it. It won't. But let's say if there's fallout right outside, by the way, this would be, would be going clicking really fast. And that's what you want to look at. Pick up how much radiation is as I'm sitting here. I'll look at my card and say, oh, oh, the alarm's going off. I'm too close to this fallout. I need to get to a central location of my house. That's what this is beautiful for because it tells you in real time. You don't have to worry about looking at log logarithms and charts and everything to figure out. It tells you in real time. And you can literally clear it out and start it again. So let's say you move to the center of your house, just reset it. And now you can see how many micro sieverts, sieverts you're getting in per hour to tell if it's where it's now safe. Now, lastly, what's very important for this and how it works very well, let's say you went to the center of your house and you've been there for a few weeks and you want to know if it's safe to go outside. And you go outside, hey, it's not really going off. But that chicken over there, that, chicken, that chicken's still alive and it looks really tasty. Let's cook that chicken and eat it. This will tell you if the chicken is radioactive because if the chicken or you engulfs, you eat, you take into your mouth or breathe in some radioactive material, it's going to get into your tissue and you become radioactive. So instead of me putting it on my radioactive source, you put it on you. Uh-oh, I'm radioactive because you now engulfed it. Same thing with the chicken. Let's put this on the chicken. Yeah, that's one radioactive chicken right there. That's probably not the best chicken to eat. So this will be great for food sources. It'll tell if your animals have gotten radiation poisoning, have ingested it, your eggs, etc. Water. Water's a little bit different. Water will release alpha radiation when it's just not detect alpha radiation. But heavy water and stuff near nuclear blast, by the way, you can actually have heavy water develop. From fallout, you can, but the amount from the fallout is probably pretty slim. But this will tell you almost all the different types of radiation uh, problems. And of course, it comes with this handy-dandy card, which is perfect. Okay, guys, I hope this helps. Again, if this is probably, in my opinion, one of the most important preps you can pick up as a prepper. So that way you can have this and tell if there is a nuclear incident, we'll tell exactly if your food or your chicken or anything, or even you is radioactive or how far you need to get away from the walls, et cetera. I mean, maybe the fallout because of like some winds came on this side of the house, but when you take your Geiger counter to that side of the house, it's not really clicking. Oh, that'll tell you it's a little bit safer on that side of the house. So having one of these, the nuclear incident is your most important prep to have. Okay, guys, by all means, put some questions below if you like. And if need be, if I didn't explain this well enough, maybe I can make another video if you have enough questions. But I think it's pretty straightforward. And as always, keep prepping, my guys, my, my friends, and uh, keep safe. And thanks for watching.